What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Um, today we are doing another little short video. Um, we're working on our 2018 Skidoo 850. Uh, last video I did, uh, we did a how-to on to, um, how do I say this? Uh, the removal of our primary clutch using the water bolt method. If you have not watched that, go check that out after this video. But we are going to be pulling the skid, the track, and the jack shaft. So I'm going to set you guys up. Uh, what we have to do is we're going to, uh, you know, there's a bolt here with a cross shaft. So a bolt on each side, plus there's a bolt here. We're going to get those taken out right now. Um, I do have the back of the sled suspended right now. Um, not all the weight is completely off because I don't need to wait, lift the complete skid and track. But uh, once we get this back out, then we'll take more weight up on. So set you guys up on camera and we'll get to it. All right, now for this, you want a 17 mil socket, you want a 17 mil wrench or a ratchet, whatever you want to do. I use my impact, so we'll start with the back. Hold one side. Loosen the other. Now, what you did is you got one side drop down. These sleds, they have kind of a weird cross shaft in them. Um, so you gotta hold that one side, because it will spin. But, so there is a shaft on the inside, it will spin. You don't like that. Sometimes, if you're lucky, you can put that, this side back in. And now you go over to the other side, loosen it. Hopefully this will work. So, that's not, well, here, let me try this. I wasn't holding it. that it worked so this is that rod that I was talking about these are annoying lots of uh, do you guys hate these um, just for the simple fact they are hard to remove sometimes you'll actually have to see or you'll have to grab them if you can't see in this one um, there's teeth marks put a pair of pliers on that clamp it um, if you get one side shifted you can usually grab that and get that out so awesome get your bolt free now if you got these suspended you want to take up more slack like so now we'll move ahead we'll do the front so same thing for this, so for us, this side came out really nice. I highly doubt the other side will come out now, unless we do that same method I just talked about. So yeah, this is an instance where it is fighting us. Drop you guys down. So what you want to do, lift on your skid, uh, we'll try and pull it out one way. So take a pry bar, whatever you may have, lift up, try and get it to scoot. Being kind of a turd, take more slack up here. want to get that pulled just like that now I'll show you guys what I meant over here all right so this is kind of what I meant so see how our front swing arm is here you have a collar there 
and then you have that rod there so we're gonna have to grab that rod sorry grab that little rod there with pliers or something and get it to come free try with these okay so I just used my these are like torque multiplying uh, what are these nose pliers needle nose. and there we go so just like that it takes a little work sometimes they come easy like that sometimes not um, if they have not been apart they are kind of a pain so just work at it it will come so now comes the easy part we're set back up we're gonna pop this skid out easiest way I find um, if you guys didn't tell I have not released the uh, the bogies I don't like doing that yet but you just want to grab and kind of work your skid out little make up and down little movements like that get it around the nubs of course forget your light because you're like me and there you go just like that skid it out okay so now it's time we're gonna pull the chain case um so t30 i use my little quarter inch impact And then, yeah, just work your way around. I've actually never pulled the chain case uh, without having the turbo out. So this is kind of going to be a first just to see if I can today. But I think I should be able to manage. Now you will want to drain the oil first. I believe it's a five mil um, Allen key you want just in the bottom. Mine is not working quite the way it needs to, so we're just gonna go without. Oh yeah, there is a bolt right here. Right, right, right. Of course there is. I might need I might need to pull the turbo. Let's hope not, but might. There is one 10 mil, um, you will need just in the bottom, super easy to get at, but uh, you do need to pull that. So I'm going to fight around, I'm going to try and get the rest of the bolts out here without pulling my turbo. Um, if you have a can, you'll have lots of room, but for me, yeah, I'm going to need to do some work. Okay, so I went ahead, I did end up having to sneak the turbo just out of the way. Didn't fully disconnect it, that's why it's hanging there. But uh, take your T30, you want to get all your bolts out. There is one right here, that's the reason I had to pull that. So technically, with all the plugs loose, um, like I am here, I should be able to just give it a little pry. Right here. You know what? I forgot one bolt. This one right here. And that is a T40, isn't it? Like I was trying to say there, uh, the center one, it's a T40. You want to pull that out. Now for us, we got our oil draining into the drain pan. That's about a year old, not even. That's just our chain case. I should be able to hold me up here. Really? Usually this thing just pops out. There you go. Now, you guys will probably have an easier time getting that out. For me, it was difficult because I have the chain um, loose because I pulled the secondary out. So usually that is up, does not move, but 
in this case it does so yeah like at this point this should be up here that's on your tensioner continue on live life so now what we need to do uh, of course we need to get the snap ring off I don't have snap ring pliers home at this point so I'm gonna try with two screwdrivers might get away with this maybe not but uh, I know I've done it before here you guys go at home a snap ring pliers two uh, two screwdrivers with a screwdriver in between there we go usually I have the right tools if you guys have watched my stuff but today is an instant I didn't just didn't think of that and I don't have one at home so but now I should be able to tap this gear out uh, we'll just drop the chain let me get rid of this oil first so you got your lower gear here you should be able to just rock it out it takes a little bit because you won't you can't be offset Should just pop out. I don't think I can get the gear. Get rid of that top gear. Should pop out. Wiggle motion. Just take some finesse. There we go. Gears off. I'm just going through this video that I am currently editing. Now, one thing I do want to point out, um, I will show lots of the struggles I have. Um, you know, if it's taking apart this gear in the chain case or with the skid, because I want this as relatable to what you guys might go through at home. I know I watch a lot of instructional videos on YouTube and they're very quick to the point and they skip over kind of the struggles people have. So I want to incorporate all of that so you guys can see that, you know, stuff doesn't always come apart as easy as you might think. So yeah. Kind of just my uh, tad bit for the day, but we'll get back to the video. So we're on our brake side now. You want your T30. That will get rid of this bolt. Nice and simple. And then you want to switch over to a 10 mil. Good luck finding it. And then there's three bolts. Sorry, there's studs with nuts. That should get us this guard off. So that's for your brake. Now, this is kind of fun. Uh, we gotta get the caliper off, plus you need to get your uh, rotor off. So we'll get into that here. You want your snap ring pliers? I'll go ahead, I'll get the snap ring off, and then we'll continue on. I'll try and show this technique. So you take your two screwdrivers, get those set in there, spread them, put this in, and then just squeeze. You gotta get it. it takes a couple tries just because this is so long. Get it in. Get it in. We got it started. And there we go. So this one's pretty much all the way off. We'll just work it with a screwdriver now. There you guys go. Nice and simple. You know, it's it's not overly hard to do that. Is it the best? No, but it works. 
So now we'll need our T40. That'll be for in there. Just so happens it's all lined up for us, so. That's one. That one does not like us. Because we're not sitting straight. Right. Had to just switch out to an extension here. I hope that was enough. Got that one. <laughs> Try. Yeah, that's gonna be hard on me. patience guys That's all it takes so now hopefully this will come free I had to make a pull in the last time but we'll just give this a little took a little whack well I didn't want to wreck wreck something so I got my little homemade puller out. I used this the last time I did this. It worked not too bad. We'll give this a whirl. There it is. Okay, so this is like the easiest, cheesiest little deal. Um, the last time I used it, I was going to refine it some more, but I never have. But basically, two bolts, and you go through, put your nuts on the back side, and then, uh, yeah, it just pulls right on that mount, the caliper mount. And just like that, for some reason, you're a little stuck. flat bar, two bolts drilled, and then you can get that off. It sucks because this stays, but you actually need to pull on the back side, not the caliper itself. So that's off. Now we just pull it all the way through this side, get it out the other side, and then we'll drop this through. It is. side now I'll just pull that back through so we got our drive shaft out uh, one thing that we are upgrading 
I got these from Avid Products. These are just a, they're plastic. I don't exactly know what kind of plastic, but they are hard. Um, we're replacing these on the simple fact that these ones are ratcheting. If you have a look there, you can see exactly how rounded off those are. Um, they do a really terrible job. Where these, the nub is substantially bigger and will grab a lot better. And even just where your um, inside grabs, it's not rolled, you know, just a lot better design all in all. So these were Avid product. Um, these are one of their T3 series drivers. Uh, really affordable. They're like 130 bucks US a piece. And yeah, super good. Super good company to buy from, I do believe. So yeah, we have to put these on. Um, now we will have to press these on and off the shaft. So we will not be doing that today. Um, I got to take this to work and then I'll use the use our press at work and we'll get these on. So you'll see that at a later point. Um, I will not be doing a how to pressing on and off the drivers. Just I am not able to film. We'll just do a quick little walk, walk through here now. So of course you can see our chain case is empty. The track, the track is free, free and clear. And then yeah. So there is your brake, all that. Now we do have some other things coming for this sled. So I am going to sign off here.